Tracking your analytics on LinkedIn isn't hard. And I recommend doing it a couple of times a month so you can see what's working, not working, and so you can learn what to do more or less of. And I'm gonna show you a couple of free and paid ways that you can do this. So the easiest way is just simply to use LinkedIn's native analytics. So log into LinkedIn and then you're gonna look on the left-hand sidebar and then click through to your profile. And then scroll down to the analytics section and click on show analytics. Now you have four different sections that you can dive into. So post impressions is the amount of people who saw your content uh, over the past seven days or whatever the time period is. Followers are the amount of people following you. Profile views are the amount of people who have viewed your profile. And search appearances describes the amount of people who found you uh, in search. And you can click on any one of these to get more specific insights. So first up, I'm gonna click on post impressions. And I wasn't active on the platform over the past week, so my impressions took a nosedive. But if I go back to the past 365 days, you can see that my impressions are up 14,000%, perhaps because I started creating more content uh, on the platform. And if I scroll down, I can see all of the different posts that have resonated with my audience over the past 365 days. And basically once a week, I would go into this and I would sort it by the past seven or 14 days, pull out some content that's worked, add it to a spreadsheet, and then figure out if I can create something new or something different that builds on that idea. Next up, you may want to look at followers. So if you look at followers, you can see the amount of people uh, who have started following your account over the past uh, time period. But it's actually the demographics that I find is quite interesting because I can see uh, the types of people who are following uh, me and engaging with my content. And then I can start to call them out or address them specifically in future pieces of content. And you can, of course, sort by industry. So if you want to write industry specific content, you can do that based on who's following you or also by company size and also by company. I'd also recommend checking out uh, profile views. So this describes the amount of people who viewed your profile over the past time period. Now in another video on the channel, I explain how to optimize your profile and why you should treat it like a type of landing page. But basically, if I see people engaging uh, with my profile, uh, I could send them a quick message to say hello or ask them what they're working on. Uh, and this is quite helpful because I can see the types of people who could potentially become clients or who I could just simply send connection or in-mail requests. You can even dig into this a bit further by uh, using the drop down here. So that, can they help you get a job? Are they an influencer? Do they work at a company you follow and so on? So let's just select the influencer tab. Uh, so it looks like a couple of these people are influencers according to LinkedIn. So I potentially would want to connect with them and perhaps build relationships with them where I share their content and they share mine. On the other hand, if I was looking for a, a job, I could just simply click this option here and click on show results uh, and scroll down and I could see the types of jobs that these people are advertising. And if you click on search appearances, you can see the job titles that people have who have been searching for you or for your account. Next up, consider the analytics of other people you follow on the platform. This could give you ideas for content that you could create. To do, to do this, you're going to install the Taplio plugin for Chrome. Now, if you're not familiar with Tapio, it's basically a tool for scheduling content on LinkedIn, but the Chrome plugin is free to use. You don't have to take out a paid subscription. Now, in another video on the channel, I do a deep dive into how Tapio works, so do check that out. But once you've installed Tapio, you'll get a quick snapshot of how your content is performing. But what I'm actually interested in is how content for other people is performing. So if I click on Luke Matthews, Luke is an influencer in the AI space on LinkedIn. Uh, and Tapio will just take a moment to scan through his account. And then it's gonna show me the best posts from Luke uh, over the past, well, basically the past few years. And then I can click through to each one of these posts and I could perhaps study the first line that he's using or the hook or the type of content that he's creating. And then I could go ahead and create something similar but put my own spin in it. Or if I wanted to send a connection request or an email request to him, I could reference one of his best performing pieces of content and say why I liked it. Uh, and then use this to, personal, <coughs> to personalize the connection or in-mail request that I send to them. You can also use the Tapio plugin to find recent hits from people across your network. Uh, I don't tend to use this as much, but basically if I click on this, I can see the types of content uh, that people I'm connected with are creating and publishing that are going viral or perhaps resonating with other people. As useful as LinkedIn's analytics are, sometimes they can be a little bit clunky and it can be hard to find what's working and not working. So I actually use Shield Analytics uh, as well. And basically this costs $25 per month. So it's probably only appropriate if you're publishing content regularly on the platform. 
So here's what my Shield Analytics account looks like. So once I've connected it to my profile, I basically get a report on a dashboard that shows me everything I need to know about how my content has performed over the past week, four weeks, month, quarter, year, weekly, uh, and custom time period. So I'm just gonna switch this uh, to monthly. Um, so like I said, I haven't been using the platform as much lately, so my impressions and likes and so on are down a little bit. Uh, now it does, or should I say, it does give me information now about specific post types, and this is actually why I use Shield Analytics quite a bit. So if I click on the content tab, and then if I go to a uh, year to date, and then if I scroll down, I'm presented with this handy content table. And this basically acts as a type of content library or database of all my top posts and underperforming posts um, ever, basically. Uh, so if I hover over the magnifying glass, I can see the post in question uh, and I can sort these by impressions. So what got the most versus least impressions by likes, by comments, and also by shares and engagement rate. And then if I hover over this metric, I can get some more specific metrics uh, about the post in question. I can click on this to head to the post on LinkedIn. Uh, and I can also copy the link to my clipboard. So basically I'll use this as a type of content library to figure out what pieces of content or posts I should repurpose or reshare on LinkedIn. So as an example, this post here about why I quit writing SEO content was published all the way back in April. So that's quite a few months ago. So I could put this post back on LinkedIn, make a couple of quick changes, um, and there's a good chance that it would do well again too. I also like LinkedIn Shield because it gives me some specific uh, analytics uh, about the number of connections that I've generated uh, over the past week. So I got 33 new connections uh, over the past seven days, um, which is probably okay considering I was actually away. Basically, my process is to send out a set number of connection requests per week to people that I want to build relationships with. And I like this because it can directly influence the amount of connections I have by simply sending out these connection requests. So it's a bit easier to influence than followers. And once people have connected with me, they will start to see the co my content in their feed. And that's actually the number one strategy that I'd recommend for growing your content on LinkedIn. Be a proactive about sending connection requests to your ideal customers, clients, uh, and people who you want to engage uh, with your content. Now, as great as all of these tools are, Shield and LinkedIn Analytics, uh, I still do like spreadsheets. So I keep track of my LinkedIn stats uh, in a simple spreadsheet. So once a week, I will review uh, the amount of posts that I've published. I will review how many new connections I got. So I'll pull that metric from uh, LinkedIn Shield. I will review, I'll put in a number uh, that just or I'll put in how many followers I have, and I'll put in the amount of impressions uh, that my post got. And I'll also put in how many views my profile got. Uh, and then I'll leave a note here about what worked or what didn't work uh, over the past uh, few days or the past week. Uh, and that will give me some insights about how I can potentially uh, improve my content. Now, I do also use a, a Notion database as well. So sometimes I'll put in high performing content into my Notion database. I have another video on the channel where I explain uh, how I write online with Notion, so do check that out. Uh, but basically, the takeaway here is that once a week, check your link LinkedIn stats, keep track of what types of content you've published, keep track of what's helping you generate impressions and followers, and also keep track of the amount of connections your account has. That's a quick overview of the types of LinkedIn analytics I keep track of. This video is just part of an entire series uh, on the channel where I do a deep dive into how you can get started on LinkedIn, create viral content and find high paying clients. So do check that out. And if you have questions, ask me in the comment section below.